Welcome back, guys. We have the drones right here in front of you so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like and exactly how big they are. And they're actually way lighter than they look, yeah? Yeah, so this guy is a full carbon fiber frame. Uh, the only non-carbon fiber on it are the motors and the electronics. Yeah. It comes in at about 10 pounds, give or take. And then how much does it lift? This will lift 20 pounds. Gosh, and so you can strap cameras on there, cows, I don't know, <laughs> what else? You, you, can, you can put just about anything on these. We've successfully flown everything from a Sony a7S, which is a smaller DSLR, okay. all the way up to a Red Dragon, which is a high-end cinematography camera. Um, wow. And that one's heavy, right? Like, that, is that up uh, to 20 pounds? That camera comes in, the carbon version comes in, I think, at about six pounds. Okay. And then the gimbal, it, it's about 10 pounds total. Okay. And then you have the, you have multiple uses for it. So you kind of yeah. use it for what kind of things? So this guy can be used for just about anything. Um, we can make a map with it. Okay. If we wanted to make a, a, a up-to-date, high ultra high resolution map, Okay. Uh, that's possible. Um, if you wanted to do aerial surveying of an area for like const future construction and stuff. Okay. That's so also possible. So they really possible. give like a unique perspective on like such as real estate. And yep. You can do the mapping. Like you know, I've heard that mines also use drones to kind mm -hmm. of you know map their different areas that they want to mine in. Yeah. So um, you can actually attach a lidar scanner to a large okay. UAV like this and do lidar scans of a, of a mine, and you can actually wow. perform volumetric analysis. Okay. Which tells you roughly how much ore has been pulled out of the mine over that last year. Gosh. Okay, so now what's the most peculiar use you've ever used one of these things for? I think that might potentially be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to give it away really because it's pretty awesome, but we're potentially going to be flying Nevada Day fla uh, flags for the parade. Wow, okay, cool. Well, that's pretty um, cool. So you get some like, you know, real world stuff. Yeah, you know, than so, just like yeah. strictly professional. You yeah, can have fun yeah. with them, huh? You know, I mean, one of the fun things that we do that I, that I like to do with these is I like to light paint with them. I like to set a camera up and take a long exposure nice. and then fly the drone around in different shapes and it makes makes light painting. Dude, that's awesome. Okay, so now let's talk about the time where you crashed it. Because that almost like that gave me weak knees. And I'm sure it gave you weak knees. Um, as well. So with any aircraft, there is always a chance for failure. And um, I didn't actually crash it. I did I wasn't it was not pilot error, it was system failure. Yeah, it was like all mechanics in it. All the electronics within the rig just fell apart and it flipped out of the sky and so you can see the collateral the damage now i mean it just looked like a jumbled mess yeah um it was not a fun afternoon so that was 75 feet high right like you started off like 75 feet it, high and then it well just... we, we were pulling a pan across reno city side uh uh skyline and it just failed and the damage is at the only damage to the camera is that little nick up in the uh, right hand corner there so it's pretty sturdy uh, I mean, the camera survived and there it goes that's just dude, dead that makes me feel so bad but uh, i mean it's crazy that the camera actually like was still running and kind of stabilized during that entire experience it was <laughs> really freaky um the, the the upside to a crash like that you learn is from it you learn from it and the the quote that was always repeated to me was, you know, Bruce, why do we fall down so we can get back up again? Right. And it, it's true, you know, I did fall down, literally, 75 yeah. feet. My this UAV, a, a UAV similar to this, I should say, fell out of the sky. And, you know, now we're back up in the air using it on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, it, well, now you kind of have them, like, really ready to go. Yeah, well, we have, and, you know, we also have a lot of safety protocols along with that. You know, we don't fly in an area with any people underneath it. We don't fly in an area with any property right. underneath it unless a, the, unless the uh, property owner has signed a full release. Uh, it, it's just safety, 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 and more safety. All and right. that's what it boils down to. Okay, well, we'll be back with more information on exactly what Nevada is doing to kind of regulate this and kind of the news that's going on. So we'll see you back.